Hello there. From Hollywood, it's Jimmy Kimmel Live. Tonight, Eddie Murphy, Tiana Taylor, and music from Mitch Rowland with Cleto and the Cleto. And now, Jimmy Kimmel. up to what has become a very modern tradition is that special time of the year when Spotify takes all the data they've been mining from us and publishes it to increase engagement using proprietary secret algorithms that track our every musical moment. It's what the holiday season is all about now, and they call it wrapped. Somehow these, these Spotify year-end wrap-ups are somehow more embarrassing than your porn search history. <laughs> My top five artists qualified me for the senior discount at IHOP this year. <laughs> if I show my pharmacist the top five, they give me Lipitor without a prescription. <laughs> they also added all the listening up from all of us. And who is the top streaming artist on Spotify for the year 2023? Is it A, Taylor Swift? That's it, it's Taylor Swift. Yeah, there's no, there isn't a B, and there's no C or D, it's just A, Taylor Swift. <laughs> Taylor Swift unseated the guy who held the number one spot for the last three years, Bad Bunny, who will heretofore be known as Sad Bunny. And uh, I got a weird result this year because I have about 11 people sharing my Spotify account. It's always less fun for parents, this thing. It's just like, let's see, my top three are Chris Stapleton, Olivia Rodrigo, and Paw Patrol. How is that possible? <laughs> I do wish I could, I want to see just my info. I would really like to see this kind of accounting for everything I do, not just music. Like, you know, I would love to, you ate 345 slices of pizza in 2023. You lost four sets of AirPods. You brought home 8.3 miles of CVS receipts. You walked into 37 rooms and forgot what you came in for. You got 19,859 emails saying, greetings, pervert. Unfortunately, there are some bad news. I hacked your webcam and washed your jeans once. So get to work on that. Not only did Taylor Swift move into the top slot on Spotify, she may be moving in with Travis Kelsey. Uh, apparently, it was getting too expensive to live in the Kansas City Chiefs luxury box. And so the story, the rumor is that they're moving in together. And while we have no idea if the rumor's true, there was a large white moving truck parked outside Travis's house in Kansas City. So it has to be true. It can't be anything other than that. <laughs> Gotta be her moving in. But I'll tell you, I'd pay good money to see Taylor Swift's face when she gets her first tour of a football player's house. This is my Scarface poster. This is my Xbox. This is my one clean towel. <laughs> Meanwhile, everything is a mess in Washington, including our national Christmas tree, which fell over last night <laughs> due to 40 mile an hour winds. That's the tree, it fell over at around five o'clock and no one got video of it. 300 million iPhones in this country, not one of them was pointed at the White House at 5 p.m. A moving truck outside Travis Kelsey's house, that they got, no problem. <laughs> 40 foot tree almost falling in the White House, nothing, so. This is why nobody believes in UFOs, by the way. <laughs> they had to lift the tree back up with a crane. The last National Christmas tree was planted in that spot back in 2021, but it had to be removed because it had a fungal disease. Now the new tree got knocked over by a gust of wind, which, by the way, fungal disease, gust, knocked over by a gust of wind, also a good way to describe our last two presidents of this country. <laughs> Tomorrow night is the um, big night in Debate nobody asked for. Our governor here in California, Gavin Newsom, versus Florida governor Ron DeSantis. DeSantis is running for president. Gavin Newsom is not. So why are they debating? It's actually very simply. You know how Mario has an evil version of himself called Wario, and sometimes they randomly challenge each other to a go-kart race? It's like that. 
the debate is on Fox News tomorrow night. And this isn't the only debate Newsom has on the schedule tonight. In fact, right now, as we speak, Newsom is in Minnesota debating another semi-prominent star of the GOP universe, none other than Mike, Mike Lindell from My Pillow. Are we able to pop in on that? Okay, let's just check in on Lindell versus Newsom, which is already in progress. And, and, and that's how, how's it come? I'm not alone within 300 feet of no long John Silver's no more. Um, now, Mr. Lindell has made a lot of accusations. So, Governor, let me ask you directly, is it too easy for Californians to commit voter fraud? Not at all. In California, <laughs> our focus is on accessibility. There are eight approved methods to vote in the Golden State. <laughs> Mail in, walk in, skate in. You can write your vote on a sea turtle. You can whisper it into a Topo Chico bottle and then toss it off the Golden Gate Bridge. You can deposit your ballot into one of our state's thousands, literally thousands, of dirty needle drop boxes. You can carve it into a giant sequoia. Or you can simply dream it, which is what I do. Run! We need, look, listen to this guy here. He thinks everybody should just be voting. Look, we need to make it harder to vote, folks. I propose it. There's only one polling place for the whole country, so we can watch it real close. It'll be in the middle of the Chattahoochee National Forest, and we gotta vote with a pen, and there's only one pen, and it's chained to an old wrench, just like a bathroom key at a Sunoco station. Sunoco. We, we gotta, we gotta, you say Sunoco, I say Sunoco. <laughs> We gotta make voting more perilous. <laughs> that way we don't have so many darn kids and dead folks and Chinese voting the way they do out in Hollywood. Oh, come on, you're crazy. That, okay. doesn't, that doesn't happen. All right, well, so, it seems like it's going great out there. I don't, we'll, check back, we'll check back in in a moment. Yeah, okay. Oh, this is something, you know. After a lot of fun we've had, Congressman George Santos is very close to becoming a former congressman. A rare vote. To remove a congressman from office is expected to happen as early as tomorrow. The Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, today said the vote to expel Santos is a vote of conscience, which most House Republicans said were like, what the hell, what is that? <laughs> but if he does go, you know, I mentioned the other night, one of the characters I'm gonna miss most is this guy, <laughs> who, George's smiley sidekick, who trots along happily wherever he goes. I don't know what he's gonna do. But I have to say, last night, even his happiest hype man was feeling pretty low. I ask that all my colleagues in the House consider and understand what this means for the future. And to set the record straight and put this in the record, I will not be resigning. Well, back to living at mom's in New Jersey, I guess. Oh, they are? OK. Let's go back to C-SPAN. Apparently, th apparently things are getting pretty heated. OK, I ain't going to tolerate no more spec talk from Gabby Newsman over here or his buddies up in Silicon Alley where they make vaccine microchips, and they have fake hunkers for the lap dancing gals down at the Sticky Piglet. I got a shout out to Chardonnay and Cashmere. Hey, ladies. OK, okay. That's, all right. Right. That's, 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 okay. that's not cool. Cali isn't just about tech. We also make weed gummies. We farm, <laughs> we farm the finest chihuahuas. We have a booming artisanal pornography industry, and we're even one of the top Five steel producers in America. He admitted it. He, holy hell, he admitted it, folks. I admitted what? The steel. Uh, President Trump wants us to stop the steel because steel is what they use to make Dominion voting machines. <laughs> and the plate in my head that sets off all the table buzzers and fun rockers. That's why I couldn't get the booster. I'm already magnetized. Look at that. It just sticks right to me. Oh, okay, well, you know what? Mike. At no, least Mike. they're talking about the issues, right? And speaking of the steel, I do want to mention the former vice chair of the January 6th committee, former Congressman Liz Cheney, just wrote a book that gives some new insight into what went down in Congress when Trump's angry storm Trumpers mobbed the Capitol building. Cheney writes that in the hours before the siege, Republicans in the GOP cloakroom were signing electoral vote objection sheets, even though they knew this was all a sham to appease Trump. She said, Congressman Mark Green of Tennessee said, the things we do for the orange Jesus, which is, 
They do have a lot of common. You know, regular Jesus healed the sick. Orange Jesus told them to drink bleach. It's kind of the <laughs> same thing. Liz Cheney also says two days after the election, she spoke to uh, then Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, who said Trump was aware he'd lost the election, unlike he's claiming. McCarthy said he knows it's over. He needs to go through all the stages of grief. And he did. First, there was denial, then anger, <laughs> then uh, depression, then anger. Uh, anger, denial, anger, <laughs> denial, 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 anger, 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 denial, and finally insurrection. And maybe the most, the most shocking story is why McCarthy suddenly flew to Mar-a-Lago three weeks after January 6th. Cheney, Mar-a-Lago? What the hell, Kevin? Kevin McCarthy, they're really worried. Trump's not eating. Well, now, I don't, that I don't believe. That's not, I believe anything other than he's not eating. I have another theory about why Trump was so depressed about January 6th. January 6th is also the day Eric was born. <laughs> Could be why he wasn't eating, okay? The White House yesterday announced that President Biden plans to email over 800,000 Americans to let them know their student loans have been forgiven if he can remember the password to his Hotmail account. <laughs> Why do you do this via email? I don't know. You don't forgive big student loans in an email. You go to the people's houses with balloons and a giant check. You make a show of it. It's an election year. Use your head, for God's sake. Oh, should we check back in on C-SPAN? All right, let's check in. Oh, dude! Oh, okay, dude! Please, oh, please. Oh, Gentlemen, dude. Oh, 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 we have to wrap this everything. up. We have to wrap this up. And Mr. Lindell, I've told you several times, no eating during the debate. What? My, my patented pillow fiber filling is so filling and full of fiber. Why the heck does I... I can't eat, but he gets to eat. Right. <clears throat> I'm not eating. I'm microdosing white truffles. Gentlemen, <laughs> gentlemen, we're almost out of time. It's time for your final statements, Governor. We'll begin with you. I'd just like to close by saying, first of all, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Number two, people perceive California as some kind of vapid, self-absorbed Narnia filled with diet gurus and celebrity pet chefs. But they're forgetting about the hardworking, everyday men and women of this state, the crystal healers, the thruples <laughs> therapists, the Botox shaman, and the yoga DJs. <laughs> 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 Men and women and all the other ones from all walks of life who overcome tremendous adversity to come together to pick grapes in my family vineyard. As the great Anthony Kiedis from RHCP once said, first born unicorn, hardcore soft porn, dream of Californication. And Mr. Lindell, you're closing. We're not closing. We're doing great. <laughs> sure, my pill is out of money, and we sold all our dump trucks and feather fluffers and my collection of bottle craps. Dude, that, dude, dude, I think you mean bottle caps. No, thank you. I mean bottle craps. I've been saving my BMs and empty two liters of code red. Anyway, <laughs> get 15% off all season women's moccasins with promo code Mountain Doo Doo Bottles. Hey, brother. <laughs> Is that pillow gluten-free? I'm getting a little peckish. Oh, yeah, sure you want to try some? I, you know, for a godless Hollywood pet, pet, pet of soda, soda mite, you ain't so bad after all. Uh, hey, guys? Guys? It's Jimmy Kimmel. Come on, not now, Jerry. We're getting it off. We were just about to French out. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I just want to pop in and say how nice it is to see you getting along. We're building bridges. We're building bridges, Jimmy. I, I think that's great. Governor Newsom, you think this is helping you prepare for the debate with Governor DeSantis tomorrow? You know, maybe. But it's like I always say to my bros down at El Porto, if you miss 100% of the waves, you don't grind. Oh, <laughs> high five, Governor. That's how you talk to the bros. All right, well, best of luck tomorrow night, Governor. And it's good to see you, Mike. I'll leave you too. This is really delicious. Yeah. I thought it was good. You know, the secret ingredient, it's Cadbury bunnies. You put the bunnies right in there? You bring them up and put them right in. Oh, right. I got it. Put on down.